governor of Utah defended a new bill banning gender-affirming care for children while appearing on Meet the Press yesterday. Let's watch. The total number of people who identify as trans in America is one half of one yeah. percent. And you've made this point when you vetoed a previous bill that had to do with trying to ban trans individuals from participating in sports. Um, how do you stop? It's mostly coming from your party. We, we saw there's over 299 bills that have been introduced, two thirds of them this year alone, two thirds of them target trans people. And again, one half of 1%. Yeah. You just made the point yourself. What is this obsession? Well, I, I think it, it is a growing number. Uh, in fact, it's, an, it, it's, it's a vastly growing number. If you go back just 10 years ago and look at the numbers, and, and here's the problem. It, this has become such a toxic uh, issue mm -hmm. that it's hard to have a, a rational conversation around it. I actually had to look outside the United States to, to, to get data. Um, I, I looked at what happened in, in, uh, in Sweden, mm -hmm. look what happened in Finland, Look what the the, uh, the French are, are saying about this. The explosion that they're seeing in those numbers, and some concerns about this. It's not just about providing care or not providing care. Mm -hmm. It's about whether we might potentially be harming young people, not having enough evidence to see what the long-term results of this are, and, and and providing better psychiatric help for those young people who are going through this. Joining us now to weigh in is YouTuber, podcaster, and host of the Blair White Project, Blair White. Thank you so much for joining us, Blair. Of course. Thanks for having me. So what is your reaction to um, Governor Cox and to this interview? Well, I think it was incredibly frustrating for uh, the statements we made that, you know, just because the trans population is a fraction of a fraction of a percent, that this is somehow something that people shouldn't care about. And the people who do are obsessed. I am not obsessed with this issue, but I am a transgender American who disagrees with children consent, with children's ability to consent to sex changes. Unfortunately, you know, at one point, the United States is looking to countries like Sweden, Australia, the UK, as sort of the thought leaders in this field and saying, okay, there's children who have been able to transition in these countries for years. And now all of those countries that we once hailed as these like liberal bastions of freedom for trans people are actually revoking a lot of those guidelines because there are so many pitfalls in the idea that children can actually consent to these things and that these are actually treatments that are helping people, particularly minor, with rather than uh, hurting them. So the reality is when you transition as a child, you are sterilized for life. This is something that people do not talk about enough. This is people that I do not find people on the right to make a big enough deal about, but you lose your ability to have children when you transition at a young age. I think that people often see, you know, photos of pregnant transgender men and people think that somehow, you know, the ability to have children is something that exists for trans people regardless, it is false, especially when you cut your puberty off. Um, the FDA has released, you know, new side effects and new warnings for Lupron, the drug that is puberty blockers, uh, uses puberty blockers in the United States, saying that it actually causes vision loss and brain swelling. Um, people, Many people don't know that when children transition, when anyone transitions actually, you are on these medications for life unless you choose to do transition, for which there is a host of horrible health complications on that front. But, you know, the idea that a child can consent to being on these medications for the rest of their life to never have the ability to have kids, these are just, they don't, it's not logical. It's, it's immoral, actually. You know, there are a lot of young people falling into social media groups and TikTok algorithms that are convincing them that they're in fact trans when they are not. This is seen by the fact that the number and that video, as stated, has exploded, you know, with trans people and young people self-identifying as trans. It used to be almost, not exclusively, but it was a mostly male phenomenon, gender dysphoria. Now it's completely flipped and there are huge numbers of young girls who are also the population that's, you know, vulnerable to body issues and anorexia and cutting and all these things that we've seen young girls deal with um, now find themselves identifying as trans. And it's very concerning, especially as someone who is trans and whose very intimate and personal knowledge of what transition is actually informs my ability to say that it's not for kids. Yeah. Blair, can I ask you, like, what is your sense of um, how abnormal is your view within the trans community from your point of view? You know, it's interesting. I think that social media often convinces people that, you know, 
a group holds a certain set of opinions they don't necessarily hold. I would say it's not so rare. I'd say the majority within the community definitely do think that children should transition, but there are way more people like me than you'd expect, especially people who are a bit older in the community. Oftentimes these young, very radical people, you know, take the microphone and speak the loudest for us. And it's also, I think people have to keep in mind that it's a lot of just <laughs> white liberal women, if I'm being very honest, who also take the microphone and speak on behalf of trans people. More often than not, when you see radical things being said about how children can consent to sex changes, if you actually look at the profile of the people who are saying this, it's people who are not trans at all. It's people who have no real stake in the game, but just want to be seen as woke and just want to be seen as accepting. I think there's also a lot of overcorrection happening. We went from, you know, a lot of homophobia in society, right? There was a time when, you know, the gay kid in high school was bullied severely, and that was very wrong. You know, I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s for which you couldn't be outwardly gay and not get bullied. And people are thinking that this trans thing is the same. So they want to affirm these trans teenagers and trans kids. But being gay doesn't entail permanent sterilization. Being gay doesn't entail, you know, taking drugs that they don't have the right, the ability to consent to. It's a very, very different thing. It's permanent bodily changes we're talking about. You know, in California, which which is now um, a sanctuary state for trans uh, kids and, you know, trans kids retain the legal abilities to transition surgically and uh, hormonally, you can't use a tanning bed under the age of 18. I don't know what same person thinks that using a tanning bed if you're 17 is somehow more dangerous than having your breast removed or your penis removed, but we really have to get past this. Other countries are, you know, going backwards and saying, actually, this isn't the move. We're facing lawsuits and kids can't consent to this. But for whatever reason, the U.S. is going full steam ahead, and it's a huge problem. Yeah, it's very interesting talking about the age at which this might be appropriate. I read a great article uh, for uh, the, the, free pe uh, the Free Press, uh, Barry Weiss's uh, journalistic project, where she solicited uh, a piece of journalism from a woman who worked at a transgender clinic who is, you know, totally on board with transgender people and thinks giving them care is very appropriate, and said over the years, it's just what you said, Blair, she became more concerned about th that it was these clusters of young girls, like, all from the same high school, all from the same social cliques, and then they would be, like, immediately affirmed and they could be written prescriptions extremely quickly. Because I think from my perspective, you know, I'm a libertarian, I don't really want, I don't think I want the government to tell fa families they can't do that. If the family is on board with it and the, the, the individual is on board with it, the doctor is on board with it, it's probably, I would say it's, I don't think the government needs to get in the way of that. But I, I would want, just for the sake of the individual involved, I would want the medical care to be very, um, to be investigating, to be really trying to verify that this is actually what this child wants. It's not part of some social contagion or some peer pressure or just being uncomfortable with one's body, which is like the normal human experience at that age. And it sounds like, and maybe you can shed light on this for us, you know, knowing more about the process, it sounds like it's a lot of, of you, you just quit, like the steps are fulfilled immediately uh, that you, that at least this is, a, I know, a, a conservative or Republican fear that kids come in for this and they're being recommended um, uh, hormone blo uh, blockers, puberty blockers, all co all sorts of stuff, like really quickly and really easily, without any uh, trying to arrive at whether this is actually the right solution for this individual. Absolutely. So I often say that trans activists are their own worst enemy. They shoot themselves in the foot at each and every turn because of the fact that over the years, they've really worked hard to actually reverse the guidelines that, you know, gatekeep people from being able to make these decisions to undergo permanent surgeries and hormone treatments that they might later regret. There was this idea that it was so difficult to get them at one time that we have to remove all the safeguards. So kids are, in fact, going to places like Planned Parenthood, local endocrinologists, with sometimes no letters from any therapist or psychologist signing off on them. And even when you look at those uh, therapists and psychologists, they're under immense pressure to affirm these kids in Canada in particular, which is another you know country we've sort of looked to as a liberal bastion for you know trans rights and trans acceptance and trans progress. It is actually illegal now for a therapist to tell a young person who is questioning if they're trans or not that they are in fact not. The idea is that this is committing um, conversion therapy, which is actually so ridiculous. And again, that goes back to playing on people's fears of being seen as hateful or being seen as bigoted. Who wants to be accused of conversion therapy? I know I don't. You know, there was a time when, you know, people recognized that conversion therapy was something that was so disastrous for gay people. But again, it's that conflation of, you know, gay rights and in the journey that the gay community took to achieving their acceptance in the society. It's very different than trans. 
Um, and, you know, I, I'm of the opinion, I'm not a libertarian, that there should be laws in place to protect children from harming themselves. And so you have to really look at the brain chemistry of humans at that age and if they're capable of actually making rational decisions about long term permanent decisions. And the answer is that they actually can't. Um, I know for for me, I would have never been able to give you a, a rational answer as to whether or not I wanted to have kids at 13, if that was the age for me to transition. It wasn't. But I will say that when I went to go transition, I had about a 20 minute appointment with the doctor and I walked out 20 minutes later with a prescription for estrogen a medication that had permanently altered almost everything about my body and sterilized me for life. So the idea that there is this magical gatekeeping that no one ends up regretting this is just false. You also see that with the explosion of detransitioners, a group of people that didn't even really exist when I started transitioning seven years ago. Um, you maybe heard of one or two cases and it was like, wow, that's so tragic. Now there are tens of thousands of young people coming out online, making YouTube videos. You know, there's Reddit groups with, you know, 30,000 plus members of people saying, I was allowed to make this decision and I regret it. And it's unfortunate because, you know, I stand with freedom. I stand with allowing people to make choices for their body that they want. Any bill that's proposed to limit the rights and freedoms of adults and adults' abilities to transition, I wholeheartedly disagree with. But when it comes to kids, I think that a healthy society does in fact protect them from making decisions that are going to harm them. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Blair. We really appreciate your perspective on these issues. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we'll have more Rising right after this. Stay with us.